Musk, born three years after the famous science fiction film Space Voyage and one year before the last Apollo mission to the moon, is reaching milestones to transport people beyond low Earth orbit, beyond the bounds of Earth's gravity and to the first stop on the SpaceX Odyssey, Mars. And if you ask him what's next, he wouldn't really have Disneyland or Disney World on his bucket list. The Falcon 9R, Falcon Heavy, Dragon Crew, Raptor Engine and Mars Colonization Transporter or MCT are all sitting right there in his head. So you might be getting how important Falcon 9's role is to his mission. So the thing now is that the latest upgradation to the Falcon 9 has made it far better, meaning much better than what they expected from the rocket. Why? Let's check it out in today's episode, shall we? Hey folks, welcome back and you are watching Skies TL. What are you guys waiting for? Like, share and subscribe. The majority of SpaceX's Falcon 9 missions this year have carried Starlink satellites, which are used to transmit the internet to ground stations. SpaceX has been working tirelessly to complete its satellite network, which now numbers over 2,000. In terms of launches, SpaceX experienced its busiest month ever in April as the business emphasized the need for a high flight rate. On April 29th, a Falcon 9 rocket launched from Cape Canaveral Space Launch Complex 40, carrying a payload of 53 Starlink satellites. An hour after liftoff, SpaceX verified the satellite's successful placement. The Falcon 9 appears to be accomplishing the job it was designed to do, and the delay in the Starship project also works in its favor. The rocket's first stage completed its sixth mission by landing on a drone ship in the Atlantic Ocean. The rocket was last used three weeks ago to launch a Crew Dragon on the AX-1 private astronaut trip to the International Space Station, a 21-day turnaround that was the quickest in history. That was SpaceX's sixth launch in April, the company's most in a single calendar month. Several times, the corporation has launched four products in a month, with five planned for December 2021. So far this year, SpaceX has executed 17 Falcon 9 flights, keeping the business on track to fulfilling its target of one launch per week. Program directors at SpaceX say that flight rate is very crucial to them and it lets them learn and grow. So yeah, pretty much like an expensive trial and error. The company's own starting constellation is a crucial element in that high flight rate. Only two of the six April launches were of Starlink satellites. The others were the crewed missions AX-1 and Crew-4, the transport of four rideshare mission and the NROL-85 secret mission for the National Reconnaissance Office. Ten of this year's 17 Falcon 9 launches have been towards the deployment of the broadband constellation. The Starlink launches are significant for pushing the boundaries of reusability. It enables SpaceX to learn and push the boundaries of what it takes to fly at such a fast rate. So, when considering the entire usefulness element of the rocket, the Falcon 9 rocket has already been launched 139 times. Just in June 2015, a NASA supply mission to the International Space Station failed. This launch score does not include the pre-flight failure of a Falcon 9 rocket and its Amos 6 satellite during a static fire test in September 2016. The Falcon 9 has been the most experienced operating rocket in the United States since 2020 when it surpassed the Atlas V rocket in total launches. Globally, the Falcon 9 fleet has less experience than the Russian Soyuz and Proton rockets which are still in service. Of course, the Soyuz remains the undisputed king of rockets it has over 1900 launches and over a dozen booster versions dating back to 1957 with over 100 failures. The Falcon 9 rocket first surpassed, then trumped, the number of space shuttle launches in the United States. During its more than three decades of service, NASA's space shuttle launched 135 times with 133 successes. To put the Falcon 9's speed into perspective, it outflew the larger shuttle around one-third of the time. If you guys are thinking, how many are they planning on doing on the Falcon 9? Well, there is no way of knowing how many missions the Falcon 9 will eventually fly. At this rate, 
the rocket may fly 500 times by the end of the decade. However, SpaceX is also working hard to decommission its own rocket. The success of the company's Starship project will almost certainly determine how long the Falcon 9 will be used as a workhorse. As we said before, it is the primary worry for both SpaceX and enthusiasts. The Federal Aviation Administration reported on April 29th that the deadline for completing an environmental assessment for orbital launches of that spacecraft from SpaceX's Boca Chica, Texas test facility had been pushed back again. The revised date is now May 31st, which is basically a one-month extension. SpaceX submitted many adjustments to the proposal that need further FAA review, as well as the department is still reviewing over 18,000 general public comments. While this is the fourth time the FAA has delayed the completion of the environmental study, which was originally expected for the end of 2021, it is unclear whether this alone is delaying Starship's maiden orbital launch. While SpaceX presented a fully stacked Starship spacecraft in Boca Chica in February, neither the Super Heavy Booster nor the Starship upper stage is scheduled to fly as the company moved on to testing other gear with no set time frame for having a vehicle ready to fly. Another key component of the Falcon 9 rocket is its safety. Here is where the Falcon 9 rocket has recently excelled. Since the Amos 6 disaster during its static fire test, SpaceX has completed a record-breaking run of 111 successful Falcon 9 launches in a row. Only two other rockets have a track record that you could compare to that of the Falcon 9. One example is the Russian Soyuz U rocket, which was launched 786 times between 1973 and 2017. The American Delta II rocket, which was recently retired, is the other. The Atlas V rocket might eventually achieve 100 consecutive successes before retiring later this decade. Between July 1990 and May 1996, the Soyuz U rocket achieved a record of 112 consecutive successful launches. This time range, however, includes the launch of Cosmos 2243 in April 1993. This mission should be classified as a failure. When inquired about the cause of the failure, according to renowned space scientist Jonathan McDowell, the rocket's control system failed during the final phase of the block I burn, causing the cargo to self-destruct. This disaster did not spell the end of Soyuz. From 1983 to 1986, the Soyuz U flew 100 flights successfully. This is the same number of successes as McDonnell Douglas Delta II rocket, which was later flown by Boeing and the United Launch Alliance. The Delta II rocket was launched 155 times with two failures. Its final launch in 2018 marked the rocket's 100th consecutive successful mission. So, in terms of successive mission successes, the Falcon 9 has already exceeded both the Soyuz U and Delta II rockets, and its cheap flight insurance costs appear to reflect this. What's remarkable about of this is that the Falcon 9 accomplished this degree of safety when SpaceX was testing and experimenting with reuse. At the time of the Amos 6 disaster in 2016, the company had yet to refly a single Falcon 9 first stage. Now, some of the rockets have flown 11 times, and SpaceX has never lost a mission using a reusable first stage, despite the fact that its creator Elon Musk and other executives have publicly said that they are pushing the technology to its limits. Hmm, that appears to be a strong argument in support of the safety of reusable launch. The Falcon 9 is a slim, slick rocket, a powerful beast that lets loose a menacing roar at liftoff that can be heard all the way down the Florida Space Coast. However, when contrasted to the Space Shuttle, it gives a surprisingly pleasant trip at first. This is not a review remark from us, but rather from one of the first NASA astronauts to fly on both SpaceX's Falcon 9 and its predecessor, the Space Shuttle, which was built for NASA by prime contractor Rockwell International. The Falcon 9's first mission was only a test flight, and their task was not only to reach the International Space Station, which they did, but to evaluate how the rocket and spaceship, which had never transported passengers before, operated. 
Now that SpaceX has demonstrated that it can safely get people into orbit, the issue became how their system, the first wholly created by a commercial firm to send NASA personnel to space, compares to the rockets and spacecraft that NASA had previously engineered. You know what occurred in the next two years. NASA is more confident in SpaceX than any other aerospace business in 2022. Space fanatics now have the beginnings of a solution to the question of which system is superior, the Falcon of course. It's not all about the rocket, clearly, SpaceX's vehicles are distinct. Even the astronaut spacesuits were sleeker and more form-fitting than their bulky at times dowdy predecessors. SpaceX founder Elon Musk and his engineers streamlined the control panels inside the capsule, eliminating the hundreds of switches that made the shuttle such a difficult spacecraft to fly and instead opting for big touch displays. The Dragon capsule's chairs were inspired by racing seats and were made using special foam molds. Even the launch tower has been updated to be more contemporary and elegant. In addition, for this mission, NASA opted to resurrect its worm emblem from the 1970s, which was painted on the side of the Falcon 9 rocket. The modifications, when taken collectively, were not just a throwback to the science fiction that had inspired Musk as a boy, but also an intentional attempt to establish a style and generate a mood. When challenged about this, Musk stated in an interview that one does not need to know much about rocket architecture or how spaceships function, but just if it is awesome or not. And if it appears futuristic and visually appealing, it is how people correlate perception with reality. The guy makes a somewhat amusing comment, but he takes it seriously. The form is, of course, one thing. Another consideration is function. And having spent almost $3 billion in public money on the spacecraft, NASA was considerably more concerned about the latter, especially because it was the first launch of people from American soil since the space shuttle was decommissioned in 2011. When questioned about their Falcon flight experience, the astronauts, both of whom had flown on the space shuttle twice, said they were somewhat prepared. The blast-off was a thrilling exhibition of physical might. Of course, that's nine engines burning at the same time, producing 1.7 million pounds of thrust, or more than five 747s combined. Waves of fire erupted in what amounts to a controlled explosion, producing a massive cloud and a boom felt in the chest even from three miles away. They said that one of the key distinctions was that the shuttle had two solid rocket engines that thundered on its trip to space. Solid motors, however strong, cannot be switched off once fired. The Falcon 9 employs solely liquid propellants, rocket-grade kerosene and liquid oxygen, resulting in a pretty smooth flight, according to the crew. However, as the first and second stages parted, and the second stage engine lit, they shook somewhat, similar to the fire engine of the Batmobile. But I'm not boasting. Another significant Falcon experience is that, unlike the space shuttle, the rocket's tanks were filled before the crew boarded. Just because SpaceX employs extremely cold fuel, the rocket must be loaded soon before liftoff to avoid boiling off. SpaceX superchills their propellant to make it denser, allowing for more fuel to be placed into the rocket, increasing performance. While NASA's Deep Space Orion vehicle and Boeing's Starliner spacecraft are expected to launch in the coming years, the Falcon 9 rocket and Crew Dragon spacecraft will almost certainly remain the least risky and least expensive way of transporting humans into orbit for at least the next decade. So coming to the end of the video, did you love today's episode? Anyways, drop in your views about the mission in the comment section below and also if we have missed out on any information. This isn't the end of the story. More interesting stuff will come up in the coming days. And we here at The Skies TL will deliver the best of the content to you folks. That's about it for today. Make sure to subscribe to our channel for more content just like this one. And while you are at it, turn on post notifications so that you never miss out on any of our future uploads. Drop a like for the video if you are a massive fan 
of space related stuff. Hope you enjoyed the video. We will meet again in the next one.